know more about our learning outcomes? You've come to the right place. Check this out. Today on Adventures of Learning Outcomes, Episode 5, Chat, How Sweet It Is, Mapping Out the Activity of Writing. This is Gary and Jellybean. They've been friends ever since attending Snail Garden together. And now, Gary and Jellybean are in love. Gary thinks it's time to pop the question and wants to make his proposal something special, something that represents his true heart. So Gary decides to write Jellybean a poem. He gets out his laptop and begins. As Gary continues to write, he starts to question, is this right? Will this be special enough? Maybe he should just write using calligraphy with a quill and ink on parchment paper. Or then again, maybe old-fashioned and formal isn't the way to go. Maybe you should just make one of those super cool YouTube lip sync proposal videos instead. That way, all their friends and family could join in. Jellybean would love that. But Gary doesn't know the first thing about making a YouTube lip sync proposal video. How would he write that? What song or songs would he use? What tools would he need? Gary didn't have a clue, and suddenly he feels unsure, isolated, like he's the only snail on the planet. Or is he? Even though Gary is writing and thinking about the activity of writing by himself, he is no way alone. He learned the genre of poems and the genre of YouTube lip sync proposal videos sometime from someone, and chances are a lot of different someones, just as he's learned how to use a laptop or what a quill, ink, and parchment paper is. In fact, Gary doesn't realize is that the activity of writing is always social, a situated response that is set in the cultural norms, tools, and times in which the writer lives. That's why it's called literate activity. It's not just writing. So really, Gary's not only concerned on what to produce, but also other important things like how to do so and how should he save it, send it, how would it be received. Hmm, whatever he decides, he sure hopes that it'll knock Jelly Bean's sock off. Uh, what to do. So Gary decides to seek some advice and asks his trusty neighbor, Mr. T. Trouble is, even though Gary knows what he wants to accomplish, what his writing goals are, he isn't so sure about how to get there or even how to talk about it. I know what you need, Sonny. Mr. T looks at Gary and smiles. You need chat. Chat? Gary is more confused thinking maybe Mr. T had better get out of his shell more often. Um, T, I'm chatting with you now. Hold on there, tiger, Mr. T says. Chat is short for cultural historical activity theory. Activity theory what? Mr. T explains the chat can help Gary explore ideas, objects, and people and how they come together to produce any sort of literate activity. Chat can help us understand how writing involves not only what is directly in front of you, but also what's around us, too. Around us? Okay, sure. Gary doesn't quite understand, so Mr. T offers him a map, going over all the areas that the writing situation of a YouTube video might actually involve, such as you, the subject who's trying to carry out the goal. Or the goal itself, making a super lip sync proposal video that Jelly Bean will love. Hmm, tools, you gotta have tools. Books, camera, speakers, computer, internet, video, audio editing software. Rules, these are the things that Gary will need to follow. Conventions of the lip sync video genre, such as copyright laws or YouTube requirements. If you don't follow certain rules, then he might not be able to post or keep his video on their site. Community, 
all the people who participate in the entire activity, including the actors and extras, family and friends, writers, musicians, editors, and audiences. Can't forget the division of labor. Who's going to do what? How is everyone involved in the production that comes together to produce it? Like who runs the camera, who lip sings at what part, and who edits? Wow, what a complex activity system. Gary realizes how much really goes on into composing a video. No wonder I felt confused. There's a lot going on there, and I didn't have a way to map it out. Thanks, Mr. T. Sure thing. You go get him, tiger. Researching into chat, Gary learns that part of his confusion was because he had never thought about writing this way before. Usually, when he would get a task at school or work, he would just follow whatever his teacher or employer asked him to do. Their assignment and suggestions basically became his only checklist. But in following their checklist, Gary never really came to understand what made his writing successful or not, especially if things didn't go as planned. All he knew that there must be something wrong with him, his structure, sentences, grammar, punctuation, how he organized it. He must not have followed what his teacher or employer wanted. So Gary looked at writing as a single product in front of him and not the larger situation and activity that this product is in response to. His view of writing was like looking at the night sky through binoculars without ever moving around. And even if he did step back and take in the larger view, he didn't have a way to talk about all the things he saw. Digging deeper into chat, however, Gary learned seven terms that helped him come to understand writing as a situated social activity more fully. Terms like activity, production, representation, socialization, distribution, ecology, and reception. He learned that these weren't just terms, but more like ideas and concepts, a way to think about and map out how writing, its activity, purpose, and social situation comes to shape and influence the work he does. Understanding chat helps Gary make a checklist of his very own, giving him a means to plan out, produce, and evaluate his own work. Inspired by his writing situation, he started thinking about the entire activity, planning ahead, discussing with family and friends, setting it up, getting ready for filming. And then he started thinking about it. Wait a minute. Do I want this to be sweet? Do I want it to be silly, funny, or romantic? There was sharing the work with other people through all stages of the production. Then there would be distribution, making it available online to reach that audience and jelly bean. Wait, what about the weather, ecology? Would it rain that day or would the sun come out and shine? And then there was reception. How would his audience react? Would she say yes? Because Gary now has a way to think about it, but also to map out and talk about the activity of writing, Gary at last found the best genre to pop the question. And so, as this sweet adventure goes, Gary's YouTube lip sync proposal video really swept Jelly Bean off her foot. And that, well, that's writing bliss. Join us next time on Adventures of Learning Outcomes, Episode 6. It's Super Uptake to the Rescue, creating your own Super Uptake story. Go on a rockin' super adventure with Dragon and best friend Fuzz E. Smalls and learn how Super Uptake helps Dragon not only get a job, but also learn successful problem-solving strategies that allow her to rock out future writing situations. (laughs) Until next time...